Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. sure like to meet whoever's running the kitchen in this place. Oh, why, Kitty? A cook that can make antelope stew taste like prairie dog ought to be something to see. Well, at least it's hot. No, it isn't. Well, mine is. You forgetting you dumped half that bowl of chili peppers in yours? <laughs> well, I've eaten here before, Kitty. Oh, hello, Marshal. Hello, John. You know what I'd do if I owned this place, Matt? Uh, tear it down? No. Look, it's got tables and chairs and knives and forks and spoons. And yeah. Out back, they got a kitchen all set up with a stove and everything. So? It's all here. I'd open a restaurant. <laughs> You're spoiled, Kitty. Dodge isn't St. Louis, you know. St. Louis? I was there six months, four years ago. Hello, Matt. Hey, Kitty. How are you, Doc? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, sit down, Doc. Sit down. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, what are you eating? Stew? That's what they call it, Doc. Ah. Oh. Well, I'll try a little anyway. And then I'm going to bed. At noon? I was up all night, Kitty, out at the Brant place. Mrs. Brant have her baby? Uh-huh, a boy. That's five I've delivered out there. You know, it seems to me it's about time they gave you one, Doc. Oh, no, 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 gave me one. <laughs> I've got enough trouble all by myself. <laughs> But seriously, I'll tell you something, Matt. It's got so I'm afraid to be driving onto the prairie at all. More Indians, Doc? I ran into Sam Butler outside. He just drove in with his whole family and all his belongings loaded onto his wagon. It says he's quitting. Well, why? The Pawnees wiped out another family up near his place on the Smoky Hill River a couple of days ago. Yeah. Uh, that's the second raid in the last two weeks. No wonder he's scared. Matt, he's telling everyone who will listen that it's a shameful thing for the law to be hiding out in Dodge while whole families are being slaughtered in the country. He is, huh? Yes. I thought you'd like to know. Now you sit with Kitty, Doc. I, uh... I'm gonna have a talk with Sam Butler. Sure. I'll uh, see you later. <laughs> Stays out there and exposes his family to them murdering savages is plum crazy. Yeah, right there. You can't fight a Pawnee war party all by yourself. And we sure ain't getting no help from the law around here. We can die and rot for all the law cares. Hello, Sam. Well, where have you been hiding, Marshal? I uh, hear the Pawnees made another raid up near you. If you call shooting and scalping a man and his wife and their two boys a raid, well, those men never had a chance to fight, far as I see. Men? Well, boys. But they were coming on 14 or 15, old enough to handle a rifle. But they got caught outside and never even made the house. I seen them lying there with my own eyes, Marshal. 
And if you'd seen him, you'd be doing something about it instead of sitting around here and dying. I'm not hired to fight Indians, Sam. That's the Army's job. And you ought to be out helping the Army. Every lawman in the country ought to. The Army doesn't need help. But there's something strange about those Pawnees. What's strange about them? They killed white men before. I'm sorry you're quitting, Sam. We need settlers out here. Not dead ones, you don't. No. No, not dead ones. What a pair. What a buy. They're talking about king-size Chesterfield at the new low price. And Chesterfield regular. They're the quality twins. Either way you like them, you get the same highest quality, the same low nicotine, the same wonderful taste and mildness, a refreshing smoke every time. Yes, the Chesterfield you smoke today is the best cigarette ever made. And it's America's most popular two-way cigarette. So buy a carton today. King-size Chesterfield at the new low price. Or Chesterfield regular. What a pair they are. They satisfy millions. They're best for you. Chester and I left Dodge that afternoon. And toward evening the next day, we ran across a troop of cavalry camped on the Smoky Hill River. It was commanded by an officer who was new to this part of the country, a Captain Starr. He was anxious to make a success of his first expedition, but so far he hadn't even seen an Indian. I decided to stay with him for a while, and I'm glad I did. The next afternoon, while we were on the march, his scouts reported another settler's cabin burned. The family killed. At my request, Captain Starr filed his troop out in patrols while he and Chester and I rode forward to the scene of the slaughter. My scouts say these people haven't been dead very long, Marshal. This morning, probably. At dawn, Captain. Well, then those Indians can't be too far off. No, but Indians have a way of disappearing. There it is, Mr. Dillon. Burned right into the ground. Uh, It's just like that last cabin. Their bodies scattered around out front. Well, let's get up there. Come on. It's a little girl. It's a little girl. Oh, they scalped them. Every one of them. Even that little girl. They even scalped her. At least they didn't torture them. Did they torture the other families, Captain? No, they didn't, Marshal. They shot them just like this and scalped them. Uh, where are you going, Marshal? Uh, what is it? Captain Starr, last night you told me this is your first chore of duty in Indian country. That's right, Marshal. I'll take a good look around here, Captain. I have. All right. All three of these settler families were killed in the open, outside their cabins. Does that mean anything to you? Those Pawnees are pretty tricky. 
I guess they really surprised him. Yeah, they sure did. There are not many arrows around. If these people had had a chance to put up a fight, there'd be a lot of arrows. They were shot, Marshal, with rifles. Bonnies don't usually waste ammunition, Captain. There's a reason for it here, though. Well, what reason? Look at the ground. There are no tracks. Every sign of tracks have been dragged out with a blanket. Say, you're... You're right. I, uh, I hadn't noticed that. Well, there's another thing you haven't noticed, or maybe you didn't know about. Oh, what's that? That boy there. How old would you say he was? Oh, about the same age as the boys at the last place, uh... Maybe 12, 13. Well, Captain, that's old enough to be a brave in a couple of years if he was a Pawnee. What do you mean, if he was a Pawnee? They usually keep a boy that age. They don't kill him. They take him and try to make a brave out of him. Oh, well, I, <clears throat> I didn't know that. I know what he's driving at, Captain. If you don't think it was Pawnees that done this. Ain't that right, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, that's right. But the Pawnees are the only tribe around here we know of, Marshal. Captain, it's them tracks... Pawnees wouldn't hide their tracks. No, they wouldn't. What? A man wearing moccasins doesn't care about his tracks, Captain. He's got nothing to hide. I'm afraid I don't understand. It wasn't Pawnees that did this. It wasn't Indians at all. It was white men. Marshal Dillon, it's impossible for me to believe white men could have done this. Is it, Captain? No white man would shoot that little girl over there and then scalp her. Did you ever hear what Chivington did to the Cheyennes at Sand Creek? Kill and scalp them all, he said, big and little. Nits make lice. Congress has repudiated that whole affair, Marshal. Well, it still happened. And it was still white men that did it. Oh. I... I suppose you're... you're right. Yeah, I'm right. But why did they do it? Horses. You see that corral out there? This man must have had six or seven head of horses. Yes, the other settlers did too. They stole the horses and probably whatever they could find in the cabins. And right now they're sitting around camp somewhere drinking coffee and laughing at all of us Indian hunters. Well, I'll find them. Now, that's a big country, Captain. Well, I got a troop of cavalry out there, Marshal, over a hundred men. All right, suppose you do find some riders with a bunch of horses. How are you going to know they're the men you're after? Well, the, these... These horses are branded, aren't they? With what brands? I don't know, but they must be registered somewhere. Maybe. But while you're out finding out all that, some other family's going to be slaughtered. There isn't time, Captain. I didn't, uh, realize how new I am at this game, Marshal. Oh, what would you suggest? Well, uh, there, there used to be a corral about five miles upriver from here. If it's still standing, we'll, we'll bait it with a couple of dozen head of good cavalry horses. Then they'll come to us. Good idea. And I'll have my troop deployed and ready to move in. No, it wouldn't work. You can't hide a hundred men, Captain. You'll have to keep your cavalry clear away from there. But how... Chester and I'll be there. We'll wait for them. Dillon. I'll throw him on the fire, Chester. Let's have some more smoke, huh? Yes, sir. <coughs> well, stand back, Chester. Yes, sir. Well, they ought to see that if they're anywhere this side of the Rocky Mountains. They're sure to be scouting around, Mr. Dillon. They ain't stole enough horses yet to leave the country. Yeah, besides, they're feeling mighty safe. They'll come. <clears throat> Mr. Dillon? Yeah? I've been thinking. Now, what's bothering you? Well, sir, there's only two of us. And I'm wondering how many there are of them. Now, you want to go back and find the cavalry? Well, I feel a whole lot safer. They'll go on, then. Oh, we... 
You, you didn't answer my question, Mr. Dillon. How many do you think we're waiting for? Yeah, there's no way of telling, Chester. Well, if there's a whole parcel of them, how in the world are we going to take them? I don't care how we take them. You're pretty mad, ain't you? Well, I can't get that little girl out of my mind. Yes, sir, I know. Now, look up. Hmm? Here comes somebody. Hmm. He's all alone. Just some cowboy, probably. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure it is. He's seen the smoke from our fire, and now he's wondering what that old corral's doing full of horses. And he might be scouting it for the others. Those men don't take many chances. Well, how are we going to find out? Well, maybe we won't till it's too late. Uh, heat up some coffee for him, will you, Chester? Yes, sir. Uh, I think I'll have a cup of it, too, huh? All right, sir. Morning. Oh, get on, stranger. We'll have some hot coffee up in a minute. Let's climb a horse here. Sure use some coffee. Had to make dry camp last night. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, you couldn't have been very far away. Why didn't you ride on down to the river here? Tell you why, mister. I was lost. I rode till after dark. And I got lost. Well, your horse could have found it for you. Maybe my horse ain't as smart as yours. No offense. Sit down. Chester's bringing the coffee now. I've been sitting all morning. Here you are, mister. Oh. We ain't got no sugar. You men are traveling pretty light, ain't you? What do you mean? Here's your coffee. Oh, thanks, Chester. You mean all them horses? Mighty big remote and no wagon. Not much grub I can see. We're driving those horses to Cheyenne. There's only two of us. We couldn't handle a wagon and the herd both. Only two of you? Yeah, Yeah, that's right. Well, mister, look at I'm drifting. Maybe you could use another hand. Maybe. Where are you from? Dakota Territory. Name of Lee Stapp. I sure would like to see Cheyenne. I've never been there. Well, why don't you ride up there alone? It'd be chasing a herd of horses all the way. Well, I'm broke, mister. Wouldn't have much of a party in Cheyenne broke, would I? No, I don't guess you wouldn't. I'm a good hand. I work cheap. How about it? You're a good hand, huh? Of course I am. Did you take a look at those horses we got? Yeah, I sure did. I ain't never seen none better. Well, they're good horses, and we take good care of them. Well, okay. What's that got to do with hiring me? Mister, I wouldn't hire you to herd sheep. What? You said you made dry camp last night. How come you tie your horse up without watering him while you stand here slopping up coffee? Well, it's my horse, ain't it? Sure. How's the coffee? Coffee? Is it any good? Well, yeah, sure it is. Well, then have some more of it. Hey, what's the... <laughs> Chester. Yes, sir. Here, catch his gun. Got it. All right, now go get some rope. We'll tie him up while he's still out. Hey, but, Mr. Dillon, you sure he ain't just a cowboy like he said? I was pretty sure, Chester, but this made me real sure. It was sticking out of his pocket. Oh, my. I'll get the rope, and we ought to hang him with it. Turn for the last act of gun smoke in just a moment. In regular or king size, you can get them either way. The best smoke ever made the Chesterfield you buy today. Smokers coast to coast are changing. It's a cinch to do. Here's all you have to say to get the one that's best for you. Chesterfield's for me. Chesterfield's for me. You just say it's Chesterfield's for me. Friends, for your vacation, take along plenty of Chesterfield. 
Buy them by the carton. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. What a pair. They're the quality twins. The same highest quality. The same low nicotine. Either way you like them, they're best for you. Smoke Chesterfield. It's America's most popular two-way cigarette. See anything yet, Chester? Yes, sir. There's some dust about a mile away, Mr. Dillon. Is it moving? Right this way. I'd guess maybe a half dozen riders. Well, your friends don't take many chances, do they, Stan? They ain't friends of mine. Well, I'll tell them that when they get here. Uh, you better turn me loose, or else you ain't gonna tell nobody nothing. You mean they won't like it, you're being all tied up that way? You ain't got a chance, Marshal. My golly, he's about right, Mr. Dillon. How are we going to fight six men? You know, I've been thinking, Chester, we could use Stapp here as a hostage. No, no, Marshal, don't do that. I don't aim to, Stapp. They wouldn't care whether you die or not. Men like you don't have that kind of friends. But we can't stand up to six men, Mr. Dillon. We, we wouldn't have a chance. No, we wouldn't, Chester. I'm going to do something I never did before in my life. What? You'll see. But first, get a bandana and fix Stapp up so he can't talk. That won't do you no good. Shut up. And get on your feet. Here's a bandana. Here, I'll do it. All right, on your feet. Stand you. Now turn around. Get our rifles, Chester. Yes, sir. There. That'll keep you quiet, Stapp. All right, now walk. Here's yours, Mr. Dillon. Oh, thanks. You get on behind that log over there, Chester. Yes, sir. I'll keep Step here with me. All right, lie down, Step. And if you make any noise, I'll split your skull. Mm-hmm. Now, go on. Lie down. You okay, Chester? Yes, you're fine. Keep the sun off your rifle. They're getting pretty close. Now, quiet. Mr. Dillon? What? What are we going to do now? Fight it out from here? Chester, I'd hate for either of us to get killed by men like them. When I start shooting, you start. Take whoever's on your side first and then work in. Yes, sir. Surprise them, huh? So they'll never know it. Shut up now. Here they come. Hmm. They must be over the river. We'll get down and wait here for him. <laughs> Maybe the staff's done killed them already. We didn't hear no shooting, did we? I don't like this, Jake. Staff should have been back a long time ago. Staff knows what he's doing. Them sure fine horses, eh? Now, Chester! <laughs> your guns. Now turn around and get your hands up in the air. Chester, come over here. We killed four of them, Mr. Dillon. Four of them. Rod Stapp up and bring him up to the fire. I'll handle these two. Well, you two stop just in time. You can turn around now. Who are you? What'd you ambush us for? 
Well, you went and killed four men. I'm a U.S. Marshal, mister. You're lying. Am I? What kind of marshal would ambush a bunch of men like that? My kind. I untied his bandana, Mr. Dillon. No reason he shouldn't talk now. That was murder. That's what that was. That was plain murder. Sure was. Even if he is a marshal, he'll hang for this. He never give us a chance. You're right, mister. I didn't give you a chance. There were too many of you. Besides, I never knew any man that deserved a chance less than you. What are you talking about? We ain't done nothing. You haven't, huh? Well, I found this on your friend's step, mister. Here. Take a good look at it. Well, what's this? It ain't nothing, just a little yellow ribbon. I burned the rest of it. You blasted fool, Stapp. I, I, I didn't get nothing else. It was just kind of a souvenir. I, I told you to get rid of everything. Stapp, I'm sorry you came in alone. I wish you'd been with the others. But I'll see you hanged. All three of you. And it's that little girl's yellow hair ribbon that's gonna hang you. L and M goes king size. Yes, L and M goes king size. Now, L and M is king size as well as regular. Both have the same low price. Both have the miracle tip for the effective filtration you need. Yes, it's the filter that counts. And L and M has the best. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine, a light and mild smoke. Yes, this is it. L and M filters, just what the doctor ordered. Buy a carton, king size, or regular, both at the same low price. L and M Filters, America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Joseph Kearns, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. the physical danger of war is over for your friend in the service. His morale is threatened now more than ever. He worries about being the forgotten man. And when there's no mail from home, that's when loneliness really settles in. And it's tough to be lonesome. The USO knows there's nothing like a letter to make a fellow feel better. Why don't you let your friend in the service know you're thinking of him? If you're a cousin, neighbor, schoolmate, or a member of his church, club, or union, write to him today. Remember, it's tough to be left out at mail call. And remember, too, next week at this same time, Chesterfield will bring you another transcribed story of the Western Frontier on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.